All right, I'm here tonight to talk about what you can do with your hands. Did you all bring your hands with you tonight? Let me see your hands. All right, uh, your hands. Now, I work with a research group here called Natural Media, and we study gestures, the way people move their hands when they talk and when they think, and what they do with their hands when they think. Did you know that the human species is the only species that can put the thumb against each one of the fingers? Is this still working? Okay. Each one of the fingers. Can you all do that? Okay. All right. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and feel your hand. Feel how amazing it is. All the bones inside, all the knuckles. How many knuckles do you have on your hand? How many knuckles? Knochen. These are... Gelenke, danke. How many gelenke do you have on your hand? Find out. Okay. I see a lot of people doing this. Okay. We can also do lots of uh, gestures with our hands. What's your favorite thing to do with your hands? <laughs> Shout it out. Applause. Vinken. Hello. What? Here's a question. What is the 18th letter of the alphabet? Figure it out. The 18th letter of the alphabet. I see a few people doing it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. All right, so we're going to talk about things you could do with your hands. Um, I've already asked you a few questions about your hands. Um, oh, one thing very important you can do with your hands. You can take a drink. <laughs> Cheers, everybody take a drink. And you can count. One, two, three. And you can count and take a drink. Oins, zwei, sofa! So, some of the things you can do with your hands is you can explore. So, when we think, we're not like the guy on the front of this magazine. You see the thinker, he's like the famous statue, right? When we think, we use our hands and we explore the world. So, here is a child learning about the shape, the feel, the, the shape, the texture, the temperature of this insect. That's called exploratory action. Our hands are senses. But we also do practical action, cafe trinken und so. Communicative action, like fighting with referees at soccer matches. But what I want to talk about today is cognitive action, how we use our hands to think. Okay? One of the things that I've studied is how do people count in different kinds of ways, different situations. I'm going to show you different ways of counting. All of these ways of counting answer the question, how many? Be feel, be feel it, right? But they do it in different ways, and the hands are used differently. So watch and see what they do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are my daughters, I just wanted to include them. Okay. Um, and this is a friend of mine. Eighteenth letter of the alphabet. And we'll have to count it up. R. R is the eighteenth letter of the alphabet. Okay. So we see that one of the things that our hands can do is they coordinate. So they link our words with the world. So when we count, we say words like one, two, three, but we also move our hands. So if I'm counting the objects on this table, I can touch them at the same time that I talk. One, two, three, four, five. Or I can move things, one, two, three, and build groups. Or I can, if the things I'm counting aren't here, I'm counting my children. One, two. <laughs> So weit ich weiß. Um, okay. Um, so our hands don't just coordinate, though. Our hands are part of our thinking. So when I'm counting objects like this, one, two, three, I'm going to stop right here. I know that everything on this side that I've touched are the things I've already counted. And everything on this side are the things I have not yet counted. So my hand is marking a conceptual category, a separation that moves through space as I count. 
when I move objects, I create a space for one group and a space for another. And when I pick an object up and move it to another group, it changes from something to be counted to something already counted. And when I move the last object, that pile disappears, and I know that I'm done counting. Okay. Same thing when you raise your fingers. The fingers that are up are things I've already counted. The fingers that are down, things I have not yet counted. So we use our hands to anchor concepts in the space that we live in. Not only do we guide our own thinking, but we guide the thinking of other people. So these are classroom lessons in how to tell time, how to read the clock. And this is a first grade class in America. You see the children sitting watching the teacher. And she's going to teach them how to read a quarter past three, right? Ein Viertel nach drei. And then she's going to show them how to read the same time as 3.15. She's going to show them using her hands. Pay very close attention to what she does with her hands to teach children how to see time on the clock. It's the same circle shape. And I divide it up and down here. Divide it into halves, right? Yeah. Now if I wanted to divide it into quarters, go from the nine to the three, right? Okay, and then a short time later she does this. Now another way that we say it is we count by fives when we move this from number to number. There's five minutes between each number. So if we were going to count by fives, it would be five, ten, fifteen. So okay, so I've just showed you two ways of doing this. In the first one, did you notice that she traces the shape with her finger on the clock? Her finger draws a circle, but she doesn't draw it in the air. She draws it on top of an object. So when the students look at that clock, they see a circle there. Three minutes to go. Okay. And then she traces a dividing line, but while she's saying, and I divide it up and down here. So words, uh, hands, link words to the world and make the connection. And then go from the nine to the three. Her hands are holding the object, so she does it with her eyes. In the other one, we all know how to count. But when she says, we move this from number to number, she turns this into a counting hand. It's not a clock hand anymore. It's a counting hand. Instead of going around the clock now, it jumps from number to number. As it says, one, two, three, or in this case, five, 10, 15. So they're learning how to count. She doesn't tell them where to start or what direction to count. Only her hand shows them where to start, which direction to go. And if the students don't read her hands, they don't learn how to tell the time. So using her hands, she teaches them to see this in two completely different ways. To see it as quarter past and to see it as 315. If we humans didn't have hands, time telling would not have lasted more than one generation. So I've shown you a little bit about exploring the world with your hands, doing practical things like drinking, and building things, of course, too. Um, talking, communicating, pointing, waving, and also how our hands are part of thinking. It's not just in the brain, but it's the way we engage with the world. The hands bring it all together. The hands make it happen. Finally, what else can you do with your hands? Thank you. Thank you.